Good evening. This is Mr. Miller, your host today. We'll be going through the Italian Renaissance and specifically art in the Italian Renaissance. So let's start off with kind of getting a background on this. Uh, we have these new Renaissance ideas of individualism and humanism. People were being viewed as unique and important. Uh, this is a stark contrast to what we saw during the Middle Ages, where individual human life didn't have that much value because you really didn't have very much freedom. Artists of the time began to show how special and different people were, again, focusing on the individual as opposed to, say, religion, which was very popular during the Middle Ages. So people were no longer labeled as they were in the Middle Ages. You were no longer just a serf, but you were somebody. You had a name and an identity, just like Superman over here. Although he doesn't really have a true identity, I guess. Um, but again, emphasizing the individual. We are all individuals. We can see who these people are. They have characteristics that we can point out. This is all very different than the Middle Ages. So the question is, what makes us unique? Taking a look at all these famous people, I might not actually get all of them. I know this one at least is Einstein. But this is the Mona Lisa. And again, this is a famous painting because it has this sort of entrancing quality, this sort of ambiguous smile that we don't really understand in those kind of magical eyes. But let's take a look at the timeline because it's really important for us to understand that the Renaissance period of art was looking back to the classical period of the Greek and Romans for much of the inspiration, although a lot of the themes, as in uh, religion or Christian Christianity specifically, provided the background for Renaissance art. So really it's a combination of both classical art and medieval themes. So classical art, the figures look perfect. Again, this is Greek and Roman. The bodies were active. Uh, bodies are often nude, uh, showing the nude form. Faces are bland and calm. This is especially true of early classical art. And scenes show heroic people and gods. You can see a vase painting here. Or freestanding sculpture. This is probably a Roman copy of a Greek original. Now, let's compare the classical art with medieval art. Subjects are religious in medieval art, for the most part. Uh, they look flat and stiff. There's really no uh, dimension here, and even if there is some sort of suggestion of dimension, it doesn't appear lifelike at all. Their important figures are larger than less important. It's called hierarchy of scale. Subjects are clothed with little emotion, usually just straight-faced. And, again, flat two-dimensional with single color background, usually gold. So here's some questions. Who is this person? What is the subject of this painting? Does this person look lifelike? And is there a use of space or color? I'll let you decide, but this is certainly not a Renaissance painting. Medieval art was almost always religious. Subject matter had something to do with the church or royalty, almost always. So if you're painted, you must have been very important. Again, either in the church or uh, royalty. People were two-dimensional. You could tell here, not very much uh, sense of space. Look at his chair or his, his throne. The columns back here. And the figure's faces are very calm, not a lot of emotion, and very little concept of depth or distance. 